Sir John was an outstanding corporate leader in his time. I mean, he had basic skills, uh, legal skills, negotiating skills, but also skills of leadership, which he, uh, he just brought to bear. And he had tremendous energy. He was a man of uh, strong intelligence. He had great integrity. Uh, he was a very loyal person, very loyal to his friends, loyal to his family. Uh, and he had a, a very strong and dry sense of humour, which everybody who knew him would always comment about. I think uh, the time that he spent in his formative years living through the Depression uh, certainly influenced him in terms of understanding that you have to work hard and you have to value what you get. He saw service in New Guinea, but I think like uh, a lot of people of his generation, a lot of the partners, um, his, uh, the, the partners of his generation in, in his uh, legal firm, there were a number of them who'd all been through the war together and uh, I think they all had a great sense that they were the lucky ones and that they'd survived where many friends hadn't. And uh, I think it made them very conscious of the need to put something back into the community and, you know, do more not just for themselves and their own families, but do something for the community. It was a very different scene from the way it is now. For a start, in the 60s and 70s, there was still a very vibrant um, number of Queensland-based companies, independent Queensland-based companies. There was a view that th those companies would continue to grow and that the business community in Queensland would be the, the head office home of numerous large Queensland-based companies. Now, of course, quite the reverse has happened. Almost all of those companies were taken over and have disappeared now. And uh, the vast majority of the Queensland business scene now is um, very much state offices of larger corporations. He certainly had that view that when he went into state, people often failed to understand what was happening in Queensland and how important Queensland was going to be to the nation's economy. And um, he always had a strong view about that. Um, and, uh, you know, was quite happy to, you know, to elucidate that view <laughs> to all and sundry. <laughs> it was an extraordinary range of roles, yes, yes. He joined the board of Queensland Trustees, for example, now Perpetual Trustees. National Mutual Life was another one. Uh, Campbell Brothers, who remained on that board uh, for a long time and participated uh, at board level in the uh, extraordinary success of that company. Uh, Queensland Trading and Holding was another company which he was a director, uh, the Bank of Queensland, and, and the list goes on. Um, and all this because I think uh, people realised that Sir John, not only with his background, but his negotiating skills and his forceful personality, could make a great contribution to the company. He was president of the Queensland Law Society, uh, vice president of the uh, Australian Law Council for a couple of years. The idea was put forward that uh, QIT would develop a, a program of instruction which would go along with articles to enable people to get a better rounded education and then of course ultimately out of that grew the QIT, now QUT Law School. He was president of, uh, of Legacy for some time. He was the chairman of the uh, Red Shield appeal at one stage, and he was also on the uh, Salvation Army Board of Advice. He was a member of the Queensland Institute of Medical Research, and he, uh, he generally was quite prepared to uh, do as much as he could for the benefit of charities and, uh, and social work in Queensland. He was uh, very, very proud of his legal firm, but he was also very proud of the companies he was involved in and the two that he would be most fond of would, would have been Bank of Queensland and Campbell Brothers. You know, he had a great feeling for both of them because they were Queensland based and, you know, because um, um, he'd been, you know, very heavily involved in, in sort of bringing them into the modern era. He was a man in a million. I mean, he was a real leader, there's no question about it, a leader in every field that he, that he took on whether it be the commercial fraternity, whether it be the charitable fraternity. Sir John did such a, or the government. Sir John did such a job that he really was of sovereign value to them all. <laughs>